Hey everyone, Token Dave over here, the dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by. So I didn't get to go to G-Fest this year, but when I was in G-Fest last year, I had the honor and privilege to meet Ken Pachiro Shashuma, the man that played Godzilla in the Heisei era. And he said one of his greatest influences was Tashiro Mufune. And he asked the audience if we ever heard of him, and I had to say no. So I became curious about this particular actor, and he's fairly easy to find because he frequently did a lot of movies with Akira Kurosawa. And today I'm going to be talking about one of those movies, Yojimbo. In the 1860s of Japan was the final years of the Tokugawa Shogunate, the last feudal system in Japan. And in that time period, masterless samurai known as Ronin became the norm as opposed to the exception. One particular ronin, Sanjiro, enters into a desolate town that is on the brink of imploding due to a war between two rival gangs. Seeing the suffering of the locals and a chance to make some money, the wily Sanjiro decides to put the two gangs against each other in order to speed up their desire to kill each other in order to free the town from their grip. You know, describing this plot... Sounds very familiar, like I've seen this movie before. Hmm. Ponder. Anyway, so watching this movie, you know, I I watching this movie and tracking out a lot of other Japanese, you know, movies, aka, you know, Nihon Inga, you know. I've actually been watching a lot of Chambara as of late for the past year and a half. And for those that don't know, Chambara are pretty much Japanese samurai movies or Japanese swordplay movies or Japanese martial art movies, you know. Uh, it goes under that window. But that's a subcategory of what's known as a Jidakeda, which is a Japanese period piece. Now, every Chambara is a Jidakeda, but not every Jidakeda is a Chambara. And one of the beauties of Yojimbo, you know, is that it can be seen as either one. It can be seen as a Jidakeda or a Chambara. But if you twisted my arm, this looks more like a Chambara. And leading this Chambara is Tashiro Mifune. Um, pretty much, you know, um, Ken Kachiro Sashuma describes him as the embodiment of Japanese masculinity at that time period that he wanted to emulate. And you really got to see that in this movie because right when you see him walking, you know, towards the town, you know, he has this air of like, you know, badassery and that people are actually trying to egg him into something. He's like, I don't need to fight you yet. You're nothing to me, you know, and you really, really see, you know, his badassery throughout this whole movie, you know, and you also get to see this charm and cunningness that he has. Something that, you know, uh, what you would call him, Shashuma actually tried to emulate. And, you know, come to think of it, um, Shashuma-san did say that, you know, Toshiro Mifune was pretty much the Japanese equivalent of Clint Eastwood. Hmm. This movie is looking more and more familiar. Hmm. Anywho, so, you know, you clearly see what a commanding presence, you know, Mafune is playing Sanjiro in this movie. But, you know, <clears throat> Mafune is not the only character that's pretty interesting. This movie has a pretty cool villain in the name of, give me a sec, I'm cheating, I know, in the name of um, Yunosuke, you know, you know, you know, and Yunosuke is, can't tell if he's a samurai or if he's just a gangster, but, you know, he has a leg up on everybody in the town because he has a pistol, you know, something that is very rare to have, you know, in the outskirts of Japan at that time, you know, and to top it off, he's pretty badass with the pistol because, you know, when you first see him, winds are really high and he's able to shoot a bell that's very far distance in heavy winds, so... There's badassery all the way around. Oh, and, you know, this character is played by the awesome Takusaka Naka Nakadai, you know. And pretty much Nakadai and Mufune, they make great contrasting, you know, adversaries in this movie. 
where one is more of an old school badass and another one is a badass but a more modernized badass and a lot more sadistic. But, you know, the best the best interaction Mifune has in this movie is with, you know, Gonoji, the owner of the tavern that he says that, played by Ijiro Tono. And the relation between, like, you know, Sanjiro and Gonji is actually really, really fun to watch. I love how Gonji, you know, the elder person of the town, has seen it go to hell and basically is trying to dissuade Sanjiro from both staying and trying to do his plot because he doesn't want to see any more bloodshed, but he slowly sees that Sanjiro is the best hope for this town to actually have a future. But for me, the most interesting person, while you don't see him too much, you know, is actually Inokuchi, Ino, no, Inokuchi, played by Dasuke Kato. Guy is like really ugly looking and really, really not smart and really not bright. But he has this, you know, for me, he has this charm, he has this interest where, you know, I just loved watching him in the movie, you know, see that he's kind of stupid and, you know, always the errand boy, but about to screw something up and always scared that, like, you know, you know, his, uh, what you call it, the leader of his gang is going to wallop him and everything. So this movie actually has awesome action sequences, you know, with sword play and gunfighting. It also has basic, it also has, you know, great, great ways of like planting seeds of deception. You really get a Western, Western feel, well, Western movie like feel in Japanese cinema from this. And it's converting me to actually become a West, to watch more Western movies. And additionally, I still want to watch a lot more Chambara. So, all in all, Yojimbo is slamming. There's a reason why this movie is a classic. Wait a minute. Classic slamming. Clint Eastwood, Western. I really know that I've seen this movie before. Hmm. Anyway, agree? Disagree? Curious about the movie? Please drop me a comment down below. Give me a like. Follow me on Facebook at Token Dave or on Twitter or Instagram at Token Dave 80. Subscribe and ring that bell so you know when new video loads. But until then, this has been Token Dave, the dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by. Catch all of y'all later.